Let us understand the process of asset securitization. Asset securitization mainly involves three parties in it. First is the bank, the borrower and the special purpose vehicle. But where does this process is being used? Who uses this process? This process is mainly used by the banks. We know the two important functions of the banks. That is, the bank accepts deposits and the banks lend loans. So in this case, when the bank accepts deposits, it has to pay some interest on it and return the amount to the borrower customers. And in the similar way, the bank has to lend the loan to the borrower. But in return of it, bank keeps some sort of mortgage or any sort of documents. In case if the borrower turns defaulter, the bank doesn't go in the loss. In this case, when the bank lends loan, the bank runs out of cash in hand on that particular date. That is, the amount which the bank will receive in future, that is the principal plus the interest, which it usually receives on the monthly basis and the yearly basis and the whole amount which the bank will receive after 5 years, 10 years or 15 years, the rolling of cash is affected. That is, the bank lacks cash because the bank receives that particular cash in bits. But the balance sheet shows that particular amount as receivables. So the bank has this thing in its pocket. What can bank do with it? Bank can earn money using this receivables. So bank uses all those receivables. Receivables means those illiquid assets. Now those illiquid assets are usually the securities. Loan banked by the securities of the borrowers are usually of four main types. There are many types, but we'll consider the four ones. Asset-backed securities, residential mortgages, credit card, automobile mortgages, and there are many mortgages. We usually know all this type of mortgages. So what does bank do? Bank assembles all this, collects all this in the form of bundle, and it sells it to the special purpose vehicle. Then, the special purpose vehicle purchases it for some consideration from the bank. In return, it pays some consideration. So, in brief, the bank sells it and the SPB purchases it. So, the bank gets cash in hand on that date. And the problem of running out of cash in hand on that particular date is being solved. But the second problem arises. Why does SPB will pay? cash in hand and that too the amount is not uh, too low the amount is too high so why will spv will pay it so the spv earns some sort of fee spv deducts some fee when the spv seller purchasing that consideration spv is functioning differently to earn money on all those illiquid assets spv charges some fee and spv sells it to the third party in the form of instruments so when all those illiquid assets are categorized into different types of instruments, it is known as trenching. Now these instruments are sold in different tranches to the investors. Investors in return get some sort of return on all those instruments which they purchase. The SPV usually sells them in the form of debt, equity, or bonds now it is all those instruments are sold by the issuance of PTC or PCS so what we understood is collection of all illiquid assets is known as bulking or pooling by SPV and categorizing them or bifurcating or segmenting them in different bits is known as trenching by SPV these are the two important terms so coming back to the process let us take an example for example, if the borrower took the loan of rupees 1000 and he is paying the EMI 150, there are many borrowers, it's not the one single borrower. So, for example, the total amount of loan lent by a bank in a year, having thousands of borrowers, sums up to 1000 rupees. The EMI which the bank is earning on it is 150 rupees. So, the total amount of 1150 is deposited in the collection and payout account. Now, 
the bank sold all those illiquid assets which the borrower kept to uh, or held it to the bank for the guarantee purpose so now the borrower will ask for their properties back but before that what did bank do bank sold them did bank sell them uh, physically no these are the just documents which the bank uh, sells it to the spb so the spb gave them the fee uh, the required amount cash in hand and returned the spb charged some fee let's say here spb charged the fee of rupees 20 but can spb charge it directly from the bank no there is a process so what happens is the 1150 amount which is kept by the servicer servicer is usually the bank they have an collection and payout account now from this collection and payout account whatever emis the bank is earning are, are being deposited here and from this account the fees of the spv is being paid and the return to the investors is also paid but in case if the borrower is turned defaulter then then there is a third party or the third bank who already gives the guarantee that in case if any defaulting happens then that particular party will pay a fixed percentage of the amount of the borrower and then the same is held in the collection and payout account but that is a different thing in case if any defaulting happens now whenever any defaulter uh, comes into the picture the person who suffers the most is the bank because investors must get their return because investors are providing you cash in hand on that date and it is being provided by the middleman spv so spv will earn fees on it and the spv provides return to the investors it is not the bank provides the uh, in return to the investors it is the spv who is providing the return to the investors ultimately it is provided by bank but the middleman is spv and spv uses that particular amount from the collection and payout account so the investors wish is also fulfilled spv is also earning money spv is making fees but uh, spv is a trust managed by a trustee so it is named as special purpose vehicle investors are also getting their secure return on it and usually the instruments are bifurcated into different types for example some instruments will be deva- will be formed into equity some debt and some bonds all the strange instruments are purchased by the investors who are banks mutual fund and, and other funding institutions these are not common people like us who are purchasing it so i hope you understood the process of asset securitization basically the assets held by the bank are used in the process of securitization they held it as securities to the spv and uh, indirectly to the investors and they earn the money so it is named as asset securitization now the spv which sells those instruments to investors through pdc and pts pdc and pts uh, is a very small concept that is pdc is pay pass through certificate or pay through certificate and this whatever the return the investors will earn it is on pro rata basis that is if the spv is earning money or spv is taking out some money from collection and payout account then it has to distribute it on pro rata basis it can't distribute to two investors today and remaining eight investors tomorrow it has to distribute even a point when paisa even the spv is having point when paisa on pro rata basis spv has to distribute it to all the 10 investors equally and in pts that is pay through structure the amount of return is already fixed and investors get it on monthly or yearly basis as per their investments and the irrespective of earning of spv and the deposits in the collection and payout account the investor will get return of rupees 90 or 60 whatever the investor is earning on that particular timely basis so here what happens is our emis get reduced year by year in that case whatever the amount of return investor has fixed in the year 1 and in the year 5 is same so the collection and payout account helps us 
to overcome this uh, imbalance what happens in the year one we can pay them and we can save also because at that time we have more emis and less return but gradually we have less emis and the return is constant so the amount being saved in the collection in pr account is used to pay the later returns and in case if any defaulting happens then there is credit enhancement process in which the third party comes into the picture and pays a fixed amount of uh, loan with whatever it is defaulted by the defaulter so that the bank is saved in case there is no third party who is taking the guarantee or nothing happens and there is defaulting happening happening like nero modi then banks has to you know close down the banks get shut just like pnb got shut so i hope you understand the whole process of asset securitization